All right. All right, all right. Can you guys hear me? Thank you so much for having us. And we just want to, uh, first and foremost, I want to tell you as, a, as part of Life Without Limbs, I get the privilege of formally introducing Nick to you. I know you've already heard him just for a moment, but um, we are so thankful that we are here. Uh, I want to make sure that, that we thank the people in this place, especially you, for allowing us to come in and having Nick share his message of hope. Um, I want to thank your warden, Mr. Townsend. Can we uh, give him a round of applause? Your other, the other associate warden, uh, Mr. Fascio, can you give him a round of applause? And then also your senior warden, Joseph Wilson, thank you so much. You know, so many people went into putting this on, but I wanted to save these two for the end because I, I believe they're the heartbeat of, of this Chapel of Hope. I've been, I've been told it's been called the Chapel of Hope, and that are your chaplains, Gibbs and Gar. Thank you guys so much. So uh, I just get to ride around with this rock star and get to introduce him, and he always tells me short and sweet. So this is about it for me. But I do want to say from my heart to yours, I've been following the Lord Jesus Christ for 17 years. I'm an alcoholic who was saved by the grace of God. And what you're going to hear today is something that will change your life if you open your hearts. If you thought you knew God before, you're going to know him better. And all I got to say is, man, look at what God did. He brought us here, and we're together, and I'm so thankful for that. So that's all I got. But I'm going to introduce you formally to the man who uh, I love as a brother in Christ. He's spoken all over the world, and there's no place he'd rather be right now than right here with you. Please give it up for Mr. Nick Vujicic. Give me a hug. Thank you. Hi. Well, good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. You saw I hug my brother in Christ, Jay. I hug everyone. I'm a hugging machine. My arms fell off. You understand? <laughs> I, uh, I love hugs, and I'll be hugging you guys later. Whoever wants a hug, no problem. But uh, I just want to tell you I love you guys so much. And God gave me a little foot, and I've got two toes so I can do the peace sign. Peace. How you doing? <laughs> I... Uh, I, too, want to personally thank this unit. Thank you very much for having us here. Thank you for, for uh, allowing us to come and just sharing my story. I'm 33 years old, and I'm just so thankful in my life that I'm still here. I want you to know that there were times in life where I didn't want to live. And I'm not here just to share with you a sad story. I want to tell you that we all have ups and downs. You see my foot? Ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. And I'm not here today to tell you that I understand your pain. And I know that we're recording this for other facilities as well. And I want you to know that if you're watching this recording, that God loves you and he has a plan. And sometimes when I heard those words, I'm thinking, well, what kind of plan is this? If God is a God of love, then, then what, what good could come out of this? You know, kids came up to me at school. I went to actually Australia. I was born and raised in Australia. And they come up to me and they're like, what happened? And I go up to them and I say, cigarettes. And uh, <laughs> freak them out a little bit. I, uh, I love freaking people out, man. I love freaking adults out as well. Um, I, I've been on a lot of airplanes. I've traveled around the world 120 times. I've done 3 million miles. I've been on 2,500 airplanes. And I don't have any thumbs to twiddle with. And so when you're up in the air for so long, you know, you can't feel your legs sometimes. I, uh, I come up with some crazy ideas, like get my friends to put me in the overhead compartment and uh, <laughs> freak people out as they come in. One of my friends actually is a commercial airline pilot, and one day he looked at me one day and he said, Nick, you know, we should pull off a prank. I said, what's that? He said, we should dress you up as the pilot and greet the passengers as they get on the plane. (laughs) 
And so no joke, it was DFW Airport going to LAX, six o'clock in the morning, everyone's half asleep, no one's speaking to anybody, and they're, you know, so, you know, tired, and they're walking down the jetway, and I got my hat on, and I got my jacket on and stuff, seriously, like a pilot, and then they see me standing at the door, and they're like... I mean, they woke up right there and then, and I'm like, good morning, my name is Captain Nick Wojcicz, welcome aboard, and they're like, no way. I said, "Uh uh-huh, I'm Captain Nick Wojcic, I'm going to be flying the plane. You're so lucky to be on our flight because we're trying some new technology. (laughs) They started freaking out, man. The adults like, did you know about this? No, I didn't know about this. (laughs) All the children like, oh, this is so cool, right? And everyone's freaking out. Everyone's on the plane. And my friend, he says, okay, come on board. So I walk on the plane just like this, right? And you look down the aisle, and all the heads are like. (laughs) And I got the microphone, and I said, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for boarding so fast. And they're like, oh, my gosh. (laughs) Some people came to Jesus right there and then. It was good. (laughs) Can I tell you one more funny story? Uh, I was one day in the front seat of a car, and of course I'm not driving, but we're at the front seat, and we're at the traffic lights, and this car comes up next to us. And this girl from the other car, she's looking at me. So I'm looking at her. (laughs) She's looking at me, I'm looking at her, and all she sees is my head from the side. She has no idea. She doesn't see the full picture, right? So I get the seatbelt in my mouth and loosen it so then I can freely move. Now she's looking at me like, why are you eating your seatbelt? And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be so good. <laughs> Full knowing, uh, uh, fully knowing well right now that she's looking at me 100%, no distractions. She's looking at me. All she sees is my head. I just did this. And she thought my head did a 360 degree spin. And she's like, so good, so good. So I was born this way. And no doctor knows what I was born this way. My parents don't know what I was born this way. Lady Gaga don't know what I was born this way. And in my life, you know, seeing everyone with arms and legs, my brother and sister have arms and legs, um, you know, I, I never imagined that I'd be happy. I wanted arms and legs so bad. And I went to school, and people were looking at me, people were pointing their finger at me and laughing. I was the only one in 1989 in Australia who actually went to a normal mainstream school in a wheelchair. And it was difficult, man. I mean, everyone looked at me, and... I'm not trying to compare suffering. I want you to know right now that when you compare each other's suffering, there's no hope there. But we've got to understand that brokenness is brokenness, but hope is hope. You know, some people say, well, all you need is just to be positive. Well, it's easy for you to say. That's what I'm thinking. You know, people that have arms and legs, well, it's easy for you. People can come in here and say, well, just be positive. Well, it's easy for you because you get to go home, and I can't go home. And I just want you to know, though, that there is something I have come here to prepare a message for you, to let you know that there is hope beyond what you see. And I want you to know that I've been around the world, and I've spoken on 3,000 stages, and I've been in highest maximum security prisons all around the world. And in fact, there was one man that I met that I'll never forget in Colombia, And I know it's getting a little warm. Can you turn on that big fan at the back at the very top, please? Are you guys getting warm? Are you guys okay? You guys all right? All right, just want to make sure you guys are good. If you could switch on that big fan, because in about 45 minutes, it might be a little bit warmer. And I get warmed up as well. My hands fly everywhere. All right. (laughs) But I do want to say this, that as I've traveled around the world, I've been in a number of high maximum security prisons. And in fact... When I went to this prison, 
there was a section of the prison I could not go to. There were some people who just were, they said, too dangerous for me to meet. Now look, I'm not nervous to meet anyone, you know. My, my palms don't get sweaty. My palms don't get sweaty. My knees don't shake at all. And, you know, when, when in life, we have things in life that, that come and, and we, we try to figure out, well, well, who am I and what am I doing? And what's my purpose? Is there any purpose at all to my life in the end? When I went to this maximum security prison, they said, Nick, we, we've done the speech, but you didn't meet a couple people. And I'm like, well, I want to meet them. They said, are you sure? They said, all right. So I went there and I was in my manual wheelchair. Someone was pushing me. I didn't have this cool little thing here. And I went up to the bars. And this guy and a couple guys next to him were looking at me while I was just sharing a couple things. You know what happened? Some guy reached through the bars and grabbed my shirt and pulled me forward. And I got a little scared. And everyone's like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. They were freaking out a little bit. And he started crying. You know what he said? He said, Nick, go around the world and tell my brothers. Go around the world and tell my brothers who are behind prison bars for life that there is hope. He said, do you see these wardens? Do you see these guards? Do you see the staff here at the prison? Nick, they get to go home. They get to have a home-cooked meal. They get to see their kids. But Nick, I look at them in their eyes, and they don't believe in heaven. I look at them in their eyes, and those people who don't believe in Jesus, they're not free yet. He looked at me, and he said, I'm more free than them. And it freaked me out. I was like, wow, this man knows that there is something greater something greater than the disabilities around you or the limitations around you. And I stand before you without arms and legs telling you right now that I am absolutely not disabled. And I want you to know that just because you're behind prison bars, it doesn't mean that you're, of course you're in prison. I know there's physical bars. I know there's physical limitations. But you know what this guy said? He said, Nick, now i realized I've met Jesus behind these prison bars. And now when I take my last breath here, I'm going home. And not only am I waiting to go home, but I'm now a pastor. This is my mission field, baby. He said, this is my mission field. And every person who comes behind these bars who's become a lifer, I get to tell them it's not the end. He said, Nick, I've seen miracles behind prison bars. I've seen happiness like I've never seen happiness in my life. What is freedom? What is hope? Guys, I wanted you today to know this, that I thought I needed arms and legs. i tell you a sad story right now. My dad actually has cancer. He has stage four pancreatic cancer. His doctors told him that he has about four weeks to live. This was on the 1st of September, just last year. In two weeks, my dad got his house in order and he bought the plots of land that he is gonna be buried in. It's hard. It was hard for him. Did we cry? Yes. Do we still sometimes cry? Sure. Have we prayed for healing? Absolutely. Why? Because God does miracles. I... For real, I have a pair of shoes in my closet just in case God gives me arms and legs. <laughs> and I want you to know that everything I'm telling you is true. I look at my dad today and he's still alive. He's not who he used to be physically, but you look him in his eyes and you see that the windows of the soul are his eyes. He is solid as a rock. You know what? He doesn't know exactly what's going on in his body and the doctors don't know why he's still here, but he knows that we can pray for a miracle and if God heals him, well, we're going to thank God. 
if God doesn't choose to heal him of cancer, we're going to thank God because finally he goes home. You see, he knows that he's a citizen of heaven passing through. And in fact, if you look in your Bibles, every miracle that Jesus personally laid his hands on and healed the blind and the lepers, guess what? They all got buried in the end too, no? Why does that happen? Because we're not meant to stay here on earth forever. We are indeed citizens of heaven passing through. We were created to be eternal beings. And I want you to know today that God loves you. And I didn't believe that for many years. You know when God says in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope, and a future. You know what I said as a young kid when I heard that? I said, um, God, you say you have a plan. Can I suggest a plan B? <laughs> it would be cool to run. You see my table up here? This to me is like a timeline. And let's say that when I was eight years old, that was my destiny. The Word of God is not just another book. It is the only book that God says that I've breathed upon. And when you read that book, He speaks to you. And your soul needs restoring. I felt I needed arms and legs. No, your soul needs peace and rest. The only reason why I can smile is because when a storm has come, and the storm hasn't passed, God's given me wings to fly above the storm. God says in the Bible that I will give you strength. God says in His Word, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. God says in the Word that if you ask Him for the forgiveness of your sins, you will be forgiven. And even better, He will forget your sin. Have you ever asked God for the forgiveness of your sins and then you sort of feel it sort of coming back and dangling in front of you? Do you remember when you did this? That ain't God. And He says He gives you a brand new start. He says all things come together for the good for those who love Him. He says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He says those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. But when I was eight, I had no idea that was for me. I had no idea that I'd get married. You see... When I was eight, I heard about the truth, but I didn't believe it existed. To believe in something that you can't see sounds a little crazy, but it's called faith. When I had no faith, I started walking in the other direction. You know when you have the voices in your head and the stuff going on, I want you to know it's not just you. There is a supernatural realm. Let me tell you, there are some people who tell me, well, Nick, I'm an atheist because science can explain everything. No, it can't. Let me tell you for real. I have MRI scans of my spine. I had a disease in my spine called a syrinx. When I was 19, my doctor told me, we're sorry, we have some sad news. Not only were you born without arms and legs, but you were born with a disease where your spine turns into nothing. We're going to have to put metal rods in your back. Not only do you have no limbs, you're going to be paralyzed for the rest of your life in bed from age 45. Talk about a day that I wish never came. They said, do you want to keep on coming back and checking it up? I said, no. He said, you got holes here, here, and here, and we can't do anything about it. Ten years later, I had some back problems, 
and I started feeling my nerves in my back being pinched. We got MRI scans. Guess what? One of the three holes completely closed. Two years later, watch this. Two years later, the second hole closed. And just the November that just went by, we confirmed with Western Doctors Report, we don't know how this happened, but Nick Vujicic has no more holes in his spine. Miracles happen, man. I've seen 13 blind people, seeing deaf people, hearing lame people walking crooked, backs come straight, skin diseases falling off bodies within 24 hours. I tell you, I've seen the miracles. I've seen the good supernatural and I've seen the bad supernatural. I've seen too much to believe that there is no God. You want to know why? Because when a 10 foot tall demon, that's 10 foot tall, these pillars here, those pads, that's about 10 foot tall from the stage. When a 10 foot tall demon walks through your hotel room wall in San Francisco, you ain't going to be atheist anymore. <laughs> and when you have negativity around you, I want you to know that there is a spiritual war between good and bad, God and Satan. And they war for your soul. Just like Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. You know Adam and Eve with no belly button? People say, well, if God is God, then why did he let Satan come into the garden? I'll tell you why. Because God would be an unfair God if he gave us free choice, but then no choices. What choice did they have? God spoke to them, and if they didn't hear anything else but God, what's the point of free choice? Are you with me? That's why he let the serpent in. God says something, the serpent says something else, and they believe to the serpent and choose to disobey God. Because God is holy, they had to separate from God in sin. And ever since, there's been a war. And the war one day will end. When? When every single person on the planet hears about Jesus and has the same opportunity as Adam and Eve. You hear what God says, you hear what others say, and you choose. That day, the clouds will roll back, and there will be Jesus coming down through the clouds and taking us home. And that war, you can't fight the lies unless you know the truth. And the truth will set you free. You hear the lies. Oh, Nick, you're not good enough at school at age eight. I'm looking at all the girlfriends and boyfriends and they're holding hands. And I'm thinking, man, I'm never going to get a girlfriend. I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. I ain't going to get a job. I'm just a burden to my parents. I don't have anything to live for. Even if I got married, I can't even hold my wife's hand. Guys, I realize now I don't need to hold my wife's hand. I just need to hold her heart. And I want you to know that beautiful things can come from your broken pieces when you give your broken pieces a chance. And some of you have thought of suicide. Some of you are in the darkest of darkest valleys. And I was there once too. I was eight years old, depressed. Nine years old, even darker. At 10 years old, I came to the edge. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna fall off. If I fall off, I'll break my arm or something. <laughs> but I came to the edge. And I thought to myself, there is no hope. Now, what's the truth? Was there hope? Yes. Did the Bible move? 
No. Is God still God? Yes. Did God have a plan for Nick? Yes. Was it a good plan? Yes. But I, if I choose not to believe it exists, and I'm not going to look for it. If I'm not going to look for it, I'm not going to find it. If I don't find it, I'm not going to live in it. Does that make sense? At age 10, I actually tried to commit suicide by trying to drown myself in my bathtub. And the only reason I decided to stay was because I didn't want to leave my loved ones with that pain. So I decided to give my broken pieces a chance. Man, am I glad that I'm still here. I'm so glad because I'd never have what I have today. You know what I have? I don't need arms and legs. I have joy. I have the truth. And I am free. When those voices say, oh, I'm ugly. No, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, I'm condemned forever. No, you're not. Well, Nick, no one's ever going to forgive me back at home. And, and I've just failed. And I can't even forgive myself. Well, let me tell you that God forgives you if you ask Him for the forgiveness of your sins. And it's only when you find out how much Jesus has forgiven you that then you can forgive yourself and finally let it go because the price has been paid. I want to ask you today, who are you? And what's your hope? If this was your last 30 seconds, would you be saved? I tell you, I, spoke, I speak to millions of people around the world, and I tell them about life. I've been in front of some eight-year-olds, and they're so cute, man, these kids. And I'm like, hey, guys, can I ask you a question? And they're like, uh-huh. I said, have you ever been stressed? And they're like, oh, yeah. I'm like, well, what's stressing you out? And he says, oh, homework is so stressful. And my big brother, I just wish I was taller because my big brother beats on me every day. And if I could just be taller, then everything's going to be okay. I'm like, oh, okay. Thanks for sharing. And then I'm in front of 13-year-olds. And now they're stressed. Oh, my body's changing. Oh, everyone around me is changing. They invite me to the party and then they uninvite me to the party. My parents are freaking, out, freaking me out. They don't understand me. They don't give me respect. I need my privacy and I need a boyfriend right now. Right? They're so stressed. And then 17-year-olds, now they're really stressed. Why? Well, if they can just get out of high school and get into college, then everything's going to be what? Okay. They get into college, and is everything okay? No. Now they get into college, and now they're going to do something. And now they need money. <laughs> oh, if I can just get a job, then everything's going to be okay. They finally get their job, and after two days, they look at their boss, and they look to God, and they say, God, what did I do to deserve him? He's stressing me out. I hate him. Then all the single people, oh, if I can just get married, then everything's going to be okay, right? Go talk to some married people, right? That's what you tell them. <laughs> But I'll tell you right now, I don't know what you're going through, but I know what you need. I don't know what you want. I could guess, but I know what you need. You are someone who needs the truth. And first of all, that there is hope. Your value as a human being has not changed, hasn't changed. You can beat yourself up all you want, but God still loves you just the way you are. He loved me just the way that you are. How do I know that? Because the Bible says that no sin can separate you from the love of God. 
Let me tell you a crazy story. I was one day in India, and I went to the red light district, human trafficking hub of Mumbai, 10 acres of houses. Do you see the size of this stage? It's pretty small. If you double the size of the stage, the platform down below, that's the size of a house that I went into. They have six girls in each house, sex slaves. How did they get the girls? You know what they did? They convinced their parents to sell them at age 10 for 700 bucks. One of my most humbling speaking engagements that I've ever had was in front of 650 teenagers who were sold by their parents, some of them kidnapped. How can you buy a human being? What do you tell those girls? What's their hope? They might want to be in a maximum security prison instead. Instead of getting raped multiple times a day. I'm sorry, again, we can't compare suffering, right? Because there's no hope. That doesn't help you to know someone else is suffering more. But when there is real hope, you see transformation. Let me tell you what transformation I saw in the brothels. Can I tell you this story? It's incredible. I got up there and I told these girls some truth. I didn't tell them, hey, just be positive. You can't tell those girls that. You know, some people believe in reincarnation, right? Some woman came up to me when I was 12 years old, and she said, hey, have you ever wondered why you were born this way? And I'm like, uh-huh. She said, have you ever thought of reincarnation? I'm like, what's that? She said, well, you're simply being punished for your previous life. I'm like, well, that's a lot of hope right there. I didn't even have the fingerprints to this life. How did she figure that out? I don't understand. She said, but don't worry, because now that you're a good boy, you're going to come back like a butterfly. I'm thinking, this woman don't know how many butterflies I squashed in my wheelchair. I don't want to be a butterfly. <laughs> And I tell you, I can't tell these girls to be Islam or Hindu. You want to know why? Because those religions reject them as a slave. I can't tell them to be Buddhist because Buddhism is all about this karma. Be good and good will happen. Can't tell them that. Become your own God. Can't tell them that. Be an atheist. Is that what you're going to tell them? Just be an atheist. How does that help? But I told these girls about Jesus. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You have an enemy. And it is not yourself. His name is Satan. And it was his powers and principalities of darkness that made you do what you did to be here. If he could, he'd take me out. I've had three death threats because too many people are becoming Christians in countries where it's illegal to become a Christian. And we take responsibility for our actions. Here you are. But don't let the devil win. He'll do anything he can to convince you this is it. That you're nothing. That there's no hope. Don't believe the lie. There is redemption in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. He has died for you. He loves you. And there is a worse prison than this prison. 
It's hell. And you want to know how I can forgive somebody who rapes my daughter? Who kills my son? Who kills my wife? Because hell is so bad, I didn't even want my worst enemy to go there. And let me tell you, these girls in India, when I preached the gospel, Jesus touched their life. It's the power of the love of Jesus Christ. It's the kindness of God that leads you to repentance. Repentance is you don't want to live in sin anymore. You can still be living in a lot of lustful sin in your mind behind bars. You can still live in sin amongst each other. Gossiping about each other, hating each other. Do you know hate is a sin? Don't live in sin. Live God's way and He'll refresh you and change you and transform you. Be free of sin. The greatest way to deal with temptation is not to live in sin anymore. And I told these girls about not living in sin. Some of these girls, they were free actually to leave. Watch this. They were free to leave the brothels. Because they were bought for 700 bucks. They earned their pimps. 700 bucks in three years with profit. And then after three years, they can leave. Guess what? They don't leave. But some of them that night left. They went through a Jesus rehabilitation camp for 18 months. They found a job and they didn't save up for a car or for a house. They got a bike and they just had one meal a day. Saving money for what? Not for stuff, but to go back to the brothels, to go back to the very house that they were once slaves in. You know what they bring with them? 700 bucks. You know what they bring with them? A bucket with water and a towel. And they go up to their former slaves and they look him in the eye and they say, do you remember me? I've come here to tell you, I forgive you, and Jesus loves you, and how you're living your life, God has such a better way for you to live, and I'm praying for your soul, and you see this bucket, I've come here, please let me wash your feet. And for 20 minutes, that master is weeping and weeping and weeping. And then they give him 700 bucks. And they say, I'm taking the slave home. They take him to a Jesus rehabilitation camp. They get a job. They together save up money and go back and save another girl. Now, if that ain't a miracle, I don't know what is. What do you want? Let me finish the story in India. We then went to a brothel house and I saw an old woman on the floor. And she was old, man. She looked like 120 years old. She has skin and bone, wrinkles on wrinkles. She had a hunched back like this. So she's sitting on the floor. She's looking up at me like this. She can't even close her mouth. She's that weak, looking up at me. And through a translator, I spoke to her about Jesus. On the wall, from left to right, top to bottom of the back wall of the house, are all the Hindu gods. They have about 330 million gods. And I started telling them about, telling her about Jesus. And all of a sudden, this woman walks in, and she's really angry that we're there. I'm there with the cameras and stuff, my crew. And we come in the house. 
she's on, she's on the floor. This woman walks in. She's looking at us. She says, what are you doing here? Who are you? She's got her arms crossed like this. I said, I'm Nick, and I'm here to talk about Jesus. Now, before I tell you what she says, I want you to know that as I've been in 60 countries, when you go to a developing country, and you see these people who don't have a doctor, who don't have a hospital, you know what they do about once every two weeks? They do a ceremony for black magic, where science can't explain it. That's why when a white man like me comes into a developing country and says, hey, I'm talking to you about my God that you can't see. You know what they say? Show me. So this woman, she says, I don't want to hear about Jesus. Show me. I said, what do you mean? She said, this woman on the floor, this old woman on the floor is my sister. She said, you see that door? She ain't walking out that door. She hadn't walked for four and a half years. We carry her everywhere. Look at her legs. And I looked at her legs, skin and bone. Legs that hadn't worked for four and a half years. She said, if your God is real, make her walk now. I prayed for her, and the first time, she could not walk at all. She couldn't have put any weight on her feet, trying to just get up in a vertical position to try to stand. Her face was like, ah, like this. We sat her back in the chair. She's trying to catch her breath. And I said, no, God, that ain't a miracle. We're going to pray one more time. We start massaging her legs, and no joke. No exaggeration. 20 seconds later, her face goes from this to this. Whoa. I'm like, what happened? She said, I don't know, but I'm ready. I said, what? She said, yeah, I want to try walking. And I said, no, 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 no. We need to pray a lot more. <laughs> Isn't that funny? The evangelist prays for the paralyzed woman, and the paralyzed woman says, I'm ready, and he says, no. Do you know what that means? Nick Vujicic only had a tiny, 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 little, little, little bit of faith. But he put that tiny little bit of faith in the living God. You can put oceans of faith in your intellect, oceans of faith in your attitude, oceans of faith in a dead God. But you put a little bit of faith in the Most High God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. I said, do you need help to get up and walk? She said, no. She got up by herself. It was incredible. Like not even struggling to get up. She got up. She's stomping on the ground like this. She can't believe. She says, the pain's gone. The pain's gone. She starts walking like this. We're all like, whoa. She got so excited, she starts jumping up and down. I'm like, honey, don't break the legs that God just healed. And her sister, the one who was angry, she went to the wall of God's and said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, haven't you been praying to them for a while? She said, yes. I said, this was not your God. Jesus. Jesus did this. Jesus. Your gods and any person you've been following, they didn't resurrect. Jesus did, and he's alive. Do you know why I share this story with you? I told you the verse. Nothing ever separates you from the love of God. The friend who took me there was an Indian man. And it's hard for an Indian man to look pale, but he looked really pale. And he looked at me and he said, unbelievable. I said, I know, cool, huh? He said, no, Nick, you don't understand. I said, what do you mean? He said, Nick, that old woman who walked, she ain't just any old woman. I said, what do you mean? He said, she was evil. I said, what, what did she do? He said, 45 years ago, that woman 
claimed that 10 acre block of land in Mumbai and started building the brothel houses and is the founder of human trafficking in this city. She recruited the pimps and the madams and the kidnappers. They are the ones who came up with the crafty way to convince parents to sell their kids for $700. She is responsible for at least 30,000 slaves. And God still healed her. And here's the best part. When she asked Jesus into her heart, not only did God forgive her of her sins, he completely erased his memory of them. Completely. And three years later, human trafficking in Mumbai was shut down on that 10-acre block. So what do I want? Who am I? Healthy or sick, limbs or no limbs, rich or poor, in jail or out of jail. I want to be free and complete. Not finished, complete. You ain't finished. God ain't finished with you yet. You're here for a reason. My last story. I was in front of a church in California and I saw a man hold up a little boy in the crowd. 19 month old Daniel Martinez. I couldn't believe my eyes. He had no arms and no legs and a little foot just like me. And I'm like, wow, I want to wrestle him later on. <laughs> and I got the father to bring him up on stage and he's sitting right here and looking up at me and I'm looking down at him and I can't give him a high five. So I put my little foot on his foot and gave him a low two. <laughs> when he smiled, everyone cried. And I saw my mom hug his mom and cry. And my dad hug his dad and cry. And it was incredible. I told his mom that when Daniel goes to school, when he gets teased and bullied, I'm coming to that school in my wheelchair and I'm gonna run them all over. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not the Christian thing to do. <laughs> I didn't run anyone over deliberately, but six years ago I went to that school and now he's not getting bullied. He's not only accepted, he's respected. And I tell you, you want to know what I want? One day, I'm in heaven. And I'm on, I'm on my own two legs, have my own two arms, and one day I'm going to hear my name. Hey, Nick! And I'm going to look. Daniel Martinez is going to be running to me with his new legs, hugging me with his new arms. And he will cry on my shoulder and he will say, thank you for helping me believe that this place called heaven was real. What do you think I want? Arms and legs? Or that one moment? I can't wait to see Jesus. He died on the cross for your sins. You were found guilty for a crime, and here you are in prison. If the government allowed it, and if I wanted to, let's say that I love you so much that I'm swapping with you. Could you imagine someone up here on stage saying, you are free today because someone took your place? Government wouldn't allow it. But have you had sin? 
in your life, apart from the one that got you here? When you sin, you sin against God. And you don't need to go too far to see sin. Just get two three-year-old boys and give them one toy and you'll see sin. They'll break more commandments than you know in 30 seconds. Our sin moved God. Because sin brings death. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We were supposed to die and go to hell because of sin. But God sent His Son Jesus who had no sin. And He comes to us on a cross. And if you believe that Jesus died for your sin, then you will not die for yours. And in your last breath, as you take it, you will be up there because you will be resurrected because you believed in His power. Do you believe in Jesus? If you do believe in Jesus, then walk with Him. Learn from Him. Be refreshed by Him because you can't do this on your own. If you do not have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if this was your last five seconds of breath and you don't know where you're going when you're not here and you want to know that you know that you know that you have the peace of God, if you have a relationship with Jesus, great. But if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm going to give you an opportunity to stand where you're at and to come and kneel at the front and we're going to say a prayer. And that prayer begins your faith journey with God. So right now, if you know that you have a relationship with God, don't come up the front. But if you know that you need to say, God, I am a sinner, come into my life, I want to believe in you, teach me what you want me to do, I have no idea what you have for me, I don't know what you're going to do with my broken pieces, but take away my regret, take away my shame, take away my guilt, take away my sin, that I may be a light and a pinch of salt here for as long as I live to help someone else know that you love them too. If you know you need to make your life right with Jesus, don't wait another second. Stand to your feet and come on down the front and kneel and let's say a prayer together right now. If you know you need to make your life right with God, stand and come on down the front. If you're watching this video, stand right now and come down the front. Keep coming. Right here, keep coming. You know you need to make your life right with Jesus. I don't think this is it. I'm, there, there's seven up the front. I'm waiting for another seven. I believe at least for another seven. If you know that you need to make your life right with Jesus, stand and come forward now. Come on down. Come on down. You know you need to make your life right. Listen. Listen. Be real with yourself. You could say this prayer from your chair. Yeah, sure. But if you can't stand up for your faith in a moment like this, in a setting like this, if you can't stand up for your faith here, how do you expect to stand up for your faith out there? It is time. Stand and come right now. There we go. This is the last and final call. That's two more. Keep coming. That's three more. Keep coming. It's not too late. That's four more. Keep coming. Let's bow our heads in prayer.
Dear God, we come before you and we thank you so much for your love. We thank you, Lord, that every sickness and disease would be healed in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, for our families back at home. Lord, we know that you love our families just as much as we love them. Lord God, we pray for our children. Lord God, we pray for the people that we miss. We pray, Lord God, that angels would surround them and that your salvation would come to them. Lord God, we pray that their souls will be right with you. Lord Jesus, we uplift our brothers here. We uplift those, Lord God, who are watching right now on the video. And we pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit would fill this place right now. And depression would be gone. And addictions would be gone. A dependency on pornography would be gone. A dependency of affirmation and, 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 and acceptance of people around us would be gone. Lord, that we are just humbled right now as children in front of you saying, yes, God, we love you and, and you accept us as the way we are. Thank you, Lord, that you help us to know that we're still your children and you still love us. Help us to forgive us, uh, Lord Jesus. Help us to forgive ourselves of the things that we've done wrong. Take away the nightmares. Take away the fear. Take away the depression. Take away the anxiety in the name of Jesus. Take away the hopelessness right now by your power of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we thank you that this is not the end. You ain't finished yet. And Lord, we thank you that our brothers would be complete here right now. The people who are up the front, bless them in the name of Jesus. Bless the wardens. Bless everyone here. May your Holy Spirit come and give us a hunger for your word and prayer in our prisons. May there be more revival and freedom in the bars than outside the bars. Lord Jesus, we thank you that nothing is impossible for you to do. And we thank you, Lord, that by faith we can walk and not by sight. And you are a good God and you never fail us. Thank you, God, for these beautiful, beautiful souls up the front. Change the way that they see it, it, themselves. Change the way that they see their faces. That they're a new creation. If you're up the front, please repeat after me. Say, dear God, I come to you today. And I thank you for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. I am so sorry for my sins. I repent. I do not want to live in sin. I want to know you. I want to live for you. I need your strength, not mine. Your plan not mine. Forgive me. Change me. Comfort me and heal me. Transform me by your Holy Spirit. Speak to me. Teach me to pray and give me faith to know you're with me every single day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give God a shout of glory. Amen. Before you go back to your seats, as you're going back to your seats, that's cool. You can, welcome to go back to your seat. I'll give you a hug soon. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise one more time, amen. There will be times of storms. There will be times of silence. But God is still God. Become a follower of Him. If you just came up the front, listen very carefully. You said that prayer in your heart, listen very carefully. If you need a Bible, we'll get you a Bible. But start in the book of John. And before you open up the Word of God, pray a simple prayer. Say, God, I don't know how to pray, but I want you to help me today. Tell me something. And you'll see the life of Jesus in the book of John. Just read that book three times over before you go anywhere else. This ain't a normal textbook. You open in the middle and you begin there. And when you read the book of John, you fall more in love with Jesus every day. To everyone that's watching on the camera, I want to tell you why I love you so much. 
and we love you. And welcome to the family of God. Whether you like it or not, you see my, my body, I'm your half-brother. So I am here on behalf of your brother in Christ in Colombia who said to go tell my brothers that they can still be free. We have come here on behalf of the Ministry of Life Without Limbs. I want to thank the ministry and friends and staff of Life Without Limbs for making this possible. Can we thank them? Thank you, Gary. Thank you for allowing us to dream big with you. 190 facilities already signed up to watch this. And I just want to tell, I want to, I want to, I want to do something maybe you've never done before. But complete st strangers are watching me up here and they can hear you. And I want you with a big shout, I want you to repeat something after me. Tell your brothers never give up on God. I want you to say it with strong conviction because I don't want them to just hear this story. I want you with conviction to tell your brothers never give up on God. Ready? One, two, three. Never give up on God. Amen, guys. I love you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.